This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, the Invercargill City Council asked for public opinion on the future of its city heritage buildings. Bumps in the night at Dunedin's Regent Theatre spook staff and crew. And an Invercargill family move into their new rent-free power-saving home. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The Invercargill City Council is asking the public for its views on the future of the city's heritage buildings. With big changes set to take place in the city centre, heritage buildings are a hot topic in Invercargill and it's now up to residents to put forward their ideas and opinions. Sharon Rees has more. Some of Invercargill's heritage buildings are under threat in a plan announced last week to rebuild the city centre. While two buildings in particular, the Government Life Building and the former Southland Times Building, were noted as being problematic to the redevelopment, the Council is asking the public's opinion on all of its heritage buildings. They've raised the issue again with the proposed redevelopment and there are a couple of Heritage New Zealand listed buildings you've mentioned and there's some other buildings that the Council has listed of importance through previous studies and it's really part of the bigger picture. We have quite a large number, as you can see from the photos here, of buildings and the question has been raised, do we have too many? An online survey has been released on the City Council's website seeking public opinion on the buildings. The results could help the Council decide which of the buildings could potentially lose their protected status. We have had a report uh, produced late 16 that suggested there was 26 buildings should come off the list. There may be more after we've done this um, survey that perhaps should come off as well. Later this week, a pop-up shop will also open, allowing council staff to provide information to the public and listen to opinions. We're wanting them to give us some guidance on perhaps what they see are key buildings that should be kept, maybe those buildings that aren't so important that could be perhaps removed from our list of heritage buildings. The pop-up shop will be situated in the old ASB building on Esk Street from Saturday and will run alongside the Heritage Month pop-up museum celebrating the 125th anniversary of women's suffrage. Sharon Rees, The South Today. A 15-year-old Waitaki Girls High School pupil faces an assault charge following her alleged involvement in a brawl in Omaru at noon yesterday. Police believe up to six pupils and several adults were involved. Waitaki Girls High School principal Tracy Walker says the school has spoken with police about the incident and is conducting its own investigation. Walker says one pupil had been suspended while another two had been referred to youth aid. A series of spooky, unexplained and unfortunate events caused the closure of Dunedin's Regent Theatre yesterday. A flood damaged carpet had to be removed after a tap turned itself on in the early hours. Recent unexplained events at the Regent Theatre have left staff mystified. Regent Theatre technical manager Nelson Miles says he got a call just before 6am yesterday reporting flooding in the building after a tap was left on. The damage has gone right through to the florist next door. It had proceeded down into our booking office, it had come into our foyer, it had dropped down into the next basement level. Staff are still trying to work out who or what turned the tap on in the first place. Miles arrived to find the flooded room still locked and secure, with nobody inside and the tap seemingly undamaged. He says it's not the first time something like this has happened behind the scenes and during performances. There's always a strange occurrence here at the Regent Theatre depending on what production's on at whatever particular time, depend what, um, what entity wants to come and visit you on a particular day. They all seem to be quite nice, but um, this one's been a, probably a wee bit malicious. In the past six months, lights, fans and other electrical appliances have also turned themselves on inside the empty building. Two weeks ago, another tap came on and caused a flood in the theatre. 
The Regent Booking Office reopened today and Friday night's ballet, The Piano, would continue as scheduled. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. New Zealand dairy products are among the world's cream of the crop. An Otago-made three- to six-month-old cheddar cheese has been judged second best at the biannual World Championship Cheese Contest. The Fonterra product is manufactured at Stirling, and the company is pleased the cheese is among the world's finest fromage. This year's competition attracted more than 3,000 3, entries in over 120 categories. A team of 56 internationally renowned judges technically evaluated all entries over the three-day competition. A Southland family has been selected to live rent-free in PowerNet Smart Home for a year. The Waru family moved into their new home a week ago, which has been kitted out with all the latest power-saving technologies. Sharon Rees has more. Cam and Chloe Waru and their two-year-old daughter Macy have been offered the opportunity of a lifetime. The young family were selected as tenants for the PowerNet Smart Energy Home and will live rent-free for a year, allowing for the couple to really save for the first time. We wanted to save, we seriously save this time. Like, um, so that we could buy a house, eh? Buy a house or go on a holiday or something. <laughs> like, go away on a holiday, you know, just something nice. So I think... Like the last few days when I've been thinking about it, um, like it feel it's good to be able to save this money because the idea of actually buying a house has become like quite a real, a bit more real possibility. Now, yeah. yeah. While the smart home is equipped with all the latest power saving technologies, including an electric car, there is one specific item which has already become a family favourite. Places that we've lived haven't had like a dishwasher, so I've had to do them all by hand. So it's um. It's just saved heaps of time and a lot of loud discussions <laughs> on who's doing the dishes. So the kitchen was clean in like five minutes because you yeah. can just put everything in the dishwasher and we're not having an argument about who has to clean the dishes. To do the dishes. <laughs> With Chloe working full time, Cam has taken up the role as stay-at-home dad and says the technologies are making his days much easier. They said they can see such technologies helping families to simplify their days while saving money. PowerNet will monitor the family's power usage over the year to gauge the impact smart technologies have on the family home. Sharon Reese, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, we remember the life of Dunedin educator Rakesh Pandey with his family and people whose lives he touched. And the Dunedin City Council moves a step closer to putting a citywide sinking lid on pokey machines. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. At Action Engineering, the team make their mark as innovators in engineering because they don't just make things, they provide solutions. Call now on 477-1643 or go online to see the services they provide. Why wait for seed to germinate? Why not do it the smart way? For instant results, call ReadyLawn today or for more information, go to readylawn.co.nz. FPOS, point of sale and cash registers. Rent, lease or buy. Mobile FPOS and fixed terminals. Short or long term rentals. Contact Anything's POS today. 0274 361 474. Hi, Lindsay and Alex Campbell Men's Wear. We have our three stores on sale. It's our summer clearance sale. Look at all these t shirts, 50% off. Look at all these polo shirts, 50% off. Look at all these woven shirts, short sleeves, 50% off. And there's more. Shorts. All these shorts, 50% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. But wait, there's more. 25% off all our regular lines off the normal price. Free heart transmission. Please open your heart. Chi is flowing freely. Chi is nourishing. Chi is loving. Call Sunny Chin for peace in your heart. The Terminus Apartments, where heritage meets modern sophistication and where the past is Dunedin's future. These one or two bedroom apartments are fitted with modern amenities, 
room to move and spectacular harbour and city views. Contact us now to have your piece of luxury. FPOS, point of sale and cash registers. Rent, lease or buy. Mobile FPOS and fixed terminals. Short or long term rentals. Contact Anything's POS today. 0274 361 474. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's Pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's Pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's Pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's Pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. Welcome back. Dunedin educator Rakesh Pandey, known in the field as the Director of Big Picture Learning, died last Tuesday from a rare lung condition. The South today caught up with his family and those whose lives he helped turn around. More than 30 years ago, Rakesh Pandey began helping motivate and educate people with a business then called Motivation Unlimited. It's known today as Big Picture Learning. However, Rakesh Pandey succumbed to a rare lung condition on Tuesday last week. Many of Rakesh Pandey's former students have turned their lives around, from struggling to focus on learning to becoming educators themselves. Speaking on the phone from Wellington, where she now works for the Ministry of Education, Bridget Dixon failed her first year at Otago University, but now holds a Master's in Education. A real significant human who um, I think touched a lot of lives, definitely. He's a scholar and a gentleman um, and it's really important for me as a parent, for my young men, to have great role models. Um, and I couldn't have thought of a greater one. Wow. I wasn't meant to cry but... Uh, um, Following her successes, she had planned to send her teenage sons to Rakesh at Big Picture Learning. Dunedin people Sophie Barker and Paul Allen have known Rakesh Pandey through similar circles for many years and agree there are many people in Dunedin who feel the loss of his passing. I met him at the Cook, which was an infamous meeting place of all sorts of people. So we were friends for um, over 30 years and we also went to a lot of Chamber of Commerce functions together and he was also actually tutoring my daughter and part of that was you know, the amazing way that he managed to take all of these children and lead them and inspire them to do their absolute best. He was quite a hero in that way. Oh look, I think there's a, a large number of uh, uh, people who are going to be affected by this. The, uh, he's had a, quite a large number of students who have worked quite closely with him and he's managed and continued, well, is was going to be working with this year as well. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be um, quite, quite uh, badly lost to the city. It's unclear what the future of Big Picture Learning will be. Rakesh Pandey's funeral was held in the Dunedin Crematorium Chapel on Friday. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. The Dunedin City Council is a step closer to having a city-wide sinking lid on pokey machines. The proposal has been hailed as a positive step towards recognising the harm caused by gambling. The South Today found out more. Dunedin has currently over 400 gaming machines around the city, which see around $16 million being gambled away every year. However, the City Council is proposing to extend a sinking lid on pokey machines across the whole city. The Council's hearing committee 
heard firsthand about the harm that comes from gambling, according to City Councillor Aaron Hawkins. Um, you know, hearing what damage can do to people, you know, people losing their families and losing their house and losing their children and losing their job. Yeah, it's pretty hard to hear those stories and not feel like we're obliged to do what we have the power to do in terms of uh, minimising harm or reducing harm over time. Fiona Cambridge works for the Problem Gambling Foundation, providing help to people with gambling addictions. She says that the proposal is a positive step for the well-being of the city. Yeah, so Dunedin has really done an amazing job in recognising that gambling is causing harm actually, and that they want to do something about it. The proposal will see a very gradual decrease in gaming machines around the Dunedin. I mean the sinking lid is actually doing something about it, but it's a slow, long process, you know, so it's a gradual reduction in, in machines, which will gradually reduce harm. Forty percent of the money spent by Dunedin's gamblers goes towards funding sport and arts. However, that funding is not necessarily local. Councillor Hawkins feels that it would be better for community funding to come from taxation rather than electronic gaming machines. You know, I'm not at all questioning whether those are valid recipients of that money. Um, the question is, in the longer term, whether we're comfortable with this being the source of that money and whether we can't do something about our addiction to pokies funding as a way of supporting our community organisations. The Dunedin City Council will consider the proposal at their meeting next week. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, Dunedin's colourful and controversial mural of UK singer Ed Sheeran is unveiled and we take a look at some of the exotic delicacies on display at the annual Hokitika Wild Foods Festival. One Three Five Cumberland Street is a brand new, recently listed Category One heritage building, right in Dunedin's warehouse precinct. Only a short walk to the Octagon in the central city. These are warm, well-insulated, self-contained apartments with all you need for a short or long stay. With beautiful views onto the harbour, these Airbnbs at One Three Five Cumberland Street come highly recommended for your stay in Dunedin. At Action Engineering, the team make their mark as innovators in engineering because they don't just make things, they provide solutions. Call now on 477-1643 or go online to see the services they provide. Why wait for seed to germinate? Why not do it the smart way? For instant results, call ReadyLawn today or for more information, go to readylawn.co.nz. Garage Door Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garage Door's quality service. Garage Door Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoro Valley Road. Visit www.garadour.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. At Action Engineering, the team make their mark as innovators in engineering because they don't just make things, they provide solutions. Call now on 477-1643 or go online to see the services they provide. Oh, I'm not happy with this product demonstration, Ralphie. Oh, relax. It's all about balance. The balance between softness and strength. And my balance is perfect. Mm, so we won't fall. Of course not. Hi, Ralphie. Oh, hey, oh. you all. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you fell for it. Yep, I fell for it. Cotton Softs. Softness and strength you can trust. I'm Cotton Soft on the environment, too. Active interior designer Mornington are the curtain and blind experts. The team can even advise you on outdoor products like awnings and umbrellas and will ensure that everything is perfect. 
professional for interior design with flair call active to book your free in-home consultation or call into the showroom in mornington New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. FPOS, point of sale and cash registers. Rent, lease or buy. Mobile FPOS and fixed terminals. Short or long term rentals. Contact Anything's POS today. 0274 361 474. Thanks for staying with us. Books nobody wants to read anymore are being turned into artworks for the Regent's 24-hour book sale. Roselle Labone explains. Jennifer Anglin and Matthias Schora are lighting up about these old books reimagined as works of art. The new initiative Books as Art is coming this June to the 38th Regent 24-hour book sale. Books as Art encourages people to transform the pages of old books into sculptures and artworks. Organiser Matthias Schorer says it's an opportunity to reuse books creatively and to give them new life, and anyone can do it. This book here was created by Cathy Fitzsimons, who basically took inspiration from uh, the narrative in the book to create um, what you see here in front of you. And how she started off was by uh, getting a little bone folder and folding these individual pages and then uh, inserting this light structure in behind the book. And so this one here is not actually by uh, an artist per se, it's just by someone with um, real natural creative flair and we want to not only encourage artists to get involved but everybody in the community. While it's a fundraiser for the Regent, it's also a win for local artists. It'll be a 25-75 split, so the, the Regent gets 25% of the proceeds and the, um, the artists get 75%. And um, we're giving them the materials, uh, the starting point of the materials, to create something wonderful with these books. Those who want to turn their hand will be able to pick up free pre-loved books from the beginning of March until late May at the Otago Polytechnic Hub, the Athenaeum, First Church and the Roslyn Mill. Entries will be judged by Dunedin Public Art Gallery Director Cam McCracken, who will lead a panel including artist Nicola Jackson. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. Dunedin's controversial mural of UK singer Ed Sheeran was finished last night, and it's attracting many eyes. The watercolour work cost taxpayers more than $8,000, but that hasn't been an issue for people taking selfies with it today. Finished late yesterday, this artistic interpretation of English musician Ed Sheeran was the work of Tyler Kennedy Stent. In case you haven't heard, Ed Sheeran is playing two shows in Dunedin at the end of March and one on April the 1st. One of the people taking pictures of the colourful piece is Dunedin Street Art Walking Tour Guide Victoria Gilliand, who says the artist has a huge future. I love it. I think it's just outstanding. And Tyler, the artist, is incredible. I believe that give him 20 years because he's a young man, he's only 20 years old, but give him another 20 years and I believe he's going to be New Zealand's best known living artist. Gillian says in the hour or so she was there this morning, she saw many people either having a quick look down Bath Street or walking down to take pictures walking up from the car, it's just compass. I, I've just parked the car a bit of the way down the street, but as I was walking towards the mural, it was just a constant stream of people walking down specifically or just walking past. As we spoke, more and more people stopped to take pictures of the art, or indeed to take selfies with Tyler Kennedy Stent's work. So, when in Rome, or Dunedin in this case, one simply had to. 
Victoria Gilliand says just before the South Today arrived, she'd had an argument with someone who was opposed to the mural, which she cheekily says only adds to the publicity. Daryl Beza, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Big changes are in store for Invercargill CBD. The public has been asked for its views on the future of the city's heritage buildings. The Regent Theatre was closed yesterday after a tap turned itself on in the early hours. And a Southland family has moved into their rent-free smart home for a year. And now it's time for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Phil Somerville. Hi, hi Melissa. Um, big thing tomorrow is a special edition of The Fresh. It's 12 pages uh, in compact size lift, uh, to take out of the paper. Lots and lots of recipes, Bevan Smith, Alison Lambert and so on. Hot cross buns on the cover, but there are things called hot cross scones inside. And we, before we were discussing, we're not sure what the difference is. I'm sure many viewers know, but... I'm curious to find out. I yeah. want to know the difference between an Easter bun. So all sorts of recipes, chocolate, the works. Wonderful. Uh, another big story, the, uh, uh, the Peninsula Cycleway plans. Uh, only tenders come in $20 million over the estimates. It's back to the drawing board on that, and the university role, very encouraging, substantial uh, increase in first year numbers, and increases in the humanities too, so it's very good news for the university and for Dunedin. Wonderful, thank you. Good to have some positive news for Dunedin as well, and now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Looking at the situation, a rare week of westerly airflow ahead with, weak co with cold fronts washing past in the next few days. But a more active front and colder southwesterly airflow due on Friday. Looking at the southern towns, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden, you can all expect fresh westerlies with some afternoon showers and a high of 15 degrees. Going westwards to central, Alexandra, Wanaka and Queenstown, you're all in for fine weather with moderate westerlies. Alexandra, you have the high of 20, Wanaka reaches 18 and Queenstown hits 17. Tiana is in for fresh westerlies, showers and 14. Looking at the weather further north, Omaru and Timaru, you have moderate westerlies, some cloud and 18. Amaram and Twizel, you have fine weather with moderate westerlies and a high of 19 degrees. In Dunedin, Mostly fine tonight with an overnight low of 8 degrees. Tomorrow fine with high cloud and moderate westerly winds with brief possible showers, late afternoon and a high of 17 and low of 10. And fine with sunny periods and high cloud on Thursday with moderate northerlies, high of 20 and a low of 10 degrees. And in Invercargill tonight, some cloud with an overnight low of 7 degrees. Tomorrow, sunny periods with fresh westerlies, a few scattered showers likely during the afternoon, a high of 15 and a low of 8. And on Thursday, sunny periods increasing high cloud and freshening northwesterly winds. Some rain at night with a high of 18 and a low of 10 degrees. And that's our news for this Tuesday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. Take care, ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.